Hello everyone and welcome to Cryptography Home. In this video, we'll be discussing the RC4 cipher. So we'll look at how it works and we'll also look at a brief example, a simplified example of how it is implemented. So first of all, a brief history. It is a string cipher. It was invented by Ron Rivest in 1987 and all that stuff that you can read. So let's go straight to look at how it works. The RC4 cipher uses an SRA of length 256, where S0 is equal to 0, S1 is equal to 1, S2 is equal to 2, all the way up to S255, which is also equal to 255. Next up, we have a key. So in this example, our key is I am the key. So this key, first of all, it has to be encoded. In this case, we're using uh, the ASCII encoding, American Standard Code of Information Interchange. So this gives us 73, 32, and all that. So in this encoding, uppercase A is equal to 65, B is 66, C is 67, all the way. And lowercase A is 97, and all the way as well. So the spaces are encoded as uh, 32. So where we have 32, this is a space. So the next thing that we have is a key array of length 256 as well. Now, this key array is formed from the key, and the key array is repeated. What this means is that, uh, for example, in this case, our K0 is 73, K1 is 32, K2 is 65, all the way to K11, which is 89. So since we've reached the end of the key, K12 becomes 73 again, making K13 32. So we do that all the way to K255. You simply repeat the key. Now, let's discuss the algorithms in the RC4 cipher. First of all, we have the key scheduling algorithm, and secondly, we have the pseudo-random generation algorithm. So before I proceed, I just want to mention that in other uh, documentation, they use T instead of K. So, but then for the purpose of this video, I've chosen to use the K. So, algorithm, we have key scheduling and we have pseudo-random generation algorithm. So first of all, the key scheduling algorithm. So this is the key scheduling algorithm. We have two counters, J and I, J equal to zero. And then for I being equal to zero all the way to 255, we do the following operations. J is equal to J plus SI plus KI mod 256. You swap and you end the for loop. So you perform these operations uh, 256 times. So we'll look at that in detail in the next section. The next algorithm is the pseudo-random generation algorithm. Now this algorithm, uh, at the end of this algorithm, you generate what we call a key stream. And this key stream is what is used when we're encrypting our text or when we're decrypting our text. Again, we'll look at this in detail in the next uh, sections. So encryption and decryption. When you're encrypting, the cipher text is simply equal to the plain text X or the key stream. And the plain text is equal to the cipher text X or the key stream as well. So this is how you decrypt. Again, we'll look at this in detail. Now, let's look at uh, a simplified RC4. So this is the example that I talked about. As you saw in the previous algorithm, the operations are performed up to 256 times, which is impractical for the purpose of this uh, video. So we'll look at a simplified version where we assume an SRA of length 8. In this case, uh, S0 is equal to 0 all the way to S7, which is equal to 7. And we also have a key. So this key could be some text that has been encoded to 31415. Since we're using a simplified version, this would be our key, 31415. The next thing is to come up with the key array. So like we said before, the key is uh, encoded, it's, sorry, is repeated all the way to fill the length of the SRA. In this case, the key length has to be 8. That's why 314 is repeated towards the end here. Now, let's look at the key scheduling algorithm and let's discuss it in detail. You see that instead of uh, performing this operation from 0 to 255 in the simplified version, since the length of our SRA is 8, we'll perform the operations from 0 to 7. And instead of mode 256, we're using mode 
h, which is the length of the SRA. So for i equal to 0 to, to 7, we'll perform the following operations. So in the next section, we'll discuss this in detail. Now let's look at the key scheduling algorithm in detail. So as you can see, first of all, we have our key array on top. So this is the key array. So this is k0, k1, all the way up to k7. Next, we have our SRA, which is uh, from 0 up to 7. So the whole point of this exercise will be to keep on changing the SRA as we see. So as the algorithm states, first of all, we have j being equal to 0. And when j is equal to 0, nothing is changed. So everything remains the same as it is. Now, for i being equal to 0 all the way to 7, j is equal to j plus si plus ki. So j is equal to j. This time around, j is 0 plus si. Since our i is 0, we will take s0, which is 0, plus ki, and i is 0. k0 is 3. And this gives us 3, which means now our j is equal to 3. What we do next is we'll swap si and sj, which means we'll swap s0 and s3. So as you can see, s0, s3, we'll swap them. The 0 comes here. And the 3 goes there. Next, when i is equal to 1, j is equal to j. Now our j is equal to 3. Plus si, i is 1, which is s1. And s1 is equal to 1. We're on this stage. Plus ki. And i is equal to 1. And k1 is here, right? So now our j is equal to 5. Next, we'll swap si and sj. So we'll swap s1 and S5. So S1 and S5 and we'll swap them. So the 1 comes here and the 5 goes there. So we'll keep on doing this. That's how the algorithm works. You keep on doing that until I arrives at 7. So you should know that in the actual algorithm, we'll, we'll do from uh, 0 all the way up to 255, which is exhaustive. But then, like I said, this is just a simplified version. And when you do all that, you arrive at this, whereby this is your final SRA. So from the simplified key scheduling algorithm, the new SRA becomes this, the result from the end. Now, let's say our plain text, let's have our plain text B6154. So the plain text is the message that you actually want to encrypt. So let's say you had some message like, let's say, hey, or yeah, or something. And it's been encrypted to this, it's been encoded, sorry, to this form. Like I said, this is just a simplified version. Now, uh, the next algorithm, which is the simplified stream generation algorithm or the pseudorandom algorithm, this one depends on the length of the plain text. What I mean by that is that you won't go from 0 to 7. This time around, you keep performing the operations until you reach the length of the plain text. That's why it's for i equal to i plus 1 to the length of the plain text. And you perform these operations. So like we did before, let's also do that in the form of uh, this diagram. So first of all, in this algorithm, we set i and j back to 0. So everything is back to 0. That's i and j. And then we disregard the key array. The key array is no longer useful at this stage. That's why we don't have anything on top here. And then we have the new SRA. This is the new SRA, the result from the last uh, key scheduling algorithm. Now, how the algorithm works is for i equal to i plus 1, which means this time around, since i is 0, for i equal to i plus 1, we start from i being equal to 1, all the way to the length of our plain text. So since our plain text is of length 4, right? It had 4 elements. We'll go from 1 to 4. So you do pretty much the same. So j, in this case, when i is equal to 1, j is equal to j, which is uh, 0 initially, plus si. So si, we're looking at s1, which is equal to 5, right? So j is equal to 0 plus 5 mod 8. This gives us equal to, this is equal to 5. Oh, yeah. So I didn't talk about this mod 8. What mod 8 means is uh, the remainder after dividing by 8. So let's say after performing this, an additive operation, you, you get maybe 11 
you simply get the remainder after dividing by 8. So j would be 3 in that case if the answer was 11. So we're here. Our j is equal to 5. Next, we'll swap si and sj. So i is equal to 1, j is 5. We'll swap s1 and s5, which is why this 5 comes here and the 6 goes there. Next, we're introducing this new element called t. Now, t is simply si plus sj. So t is si, i is equal to 1, remember. So we're taking s1, which is uh, s1, which is 6 plus sj, which is uh, 5. And this gives us 11. So t, like we said before, we are operating in mode 8. So the remainder after dividing by 8 is 3, which means the value of t is 3. Next, we have the element that we append to the actual keystream. So the keystream is st. In other words, the keystream is st. t is 3, which means the keystream is s3. st3, which means the element that goes on the keystream is 1. Here. And then you keep doing that. Now when i is equal to 2, you do the same thing. j is equal to j, now j is 5, plus si. Now i is 2, right? So plus s2 is 0. And this is 5. You swap s2 and s5. s2 and s5 were on this stage, so we'll swap them here. And then you get your t. t is just si plus sj. So since s2 is uh, s2 is 5 and s5 is 0, our t is just equal to 5, right? It's 5 plus 0, which gives us 5. And 5 in mode 5 is just in mode 8 is just 5. Which means the key stream is we said the key stream is st, which means the key stream is s5. And s5 is equal to s5 is equal to 0, right? Yeah, at this stage s5 is equal to 0. So that's how the algorithm works. That's the new key stream. So just like before, uh, we'll keep doing this until we reach four, until we reach i being equal to four. I think I'm getting tired. Anyway, so you keep on doing that until you reach your final uh, answer. So this is not our final answer. What we need from this is the key stream. So the key stream has to be the same length as the plain text. So in this case, our key stream is one zero zero four. Now that we have our key stream, which is 1002, which is the same length as our plain text, like we said before, to encrypt the plain text, you simply perform an exclusive OR operation between the plain text and your key stream. So first of all, uh, we we'll change the plain text to binary. So if you change 6, it's 0, 1, and 0. This is 1, 5, and 4. Next, you change your key stream to binary. So this is 1, 0, 0, 2. Exclusive O is simply, uh, it's a bitwise operation. So it's between the bits. 0, X, O, 0 is 0, 1, and what? 0 is 1. So how this works is 0, X, O, 0 is 0. 1, X, O, 0 is 1. 0, X, O, 1 is 1. And 1, X, O, 1 is a 0. So only if the... Uh, bits are different is your result one but if you have a zero and a zero it's zero and the one and the one will also give you a zero so this is our cipher text and when we change this back to numerical form we'll get seven one five six so in a real uh crypto system we'll get something like this and we'll be able to decode it back to some sort of uh, text so this is just a simplified version like i said so this is uh cipher text and decryption is pretty much the same the only difference is this time we'll be XORing the cipher text and the key stream so this is the cipher text this is the key stream and when you perform the bitwise operation you arrive back at the original plain text which is 6154 so in the actual crypto system uh, you look through 255 times you have your message 
In the actual crypto system, in short, you'll be able to change raw messages into a real cipher text message. So I don't know, maybe we'll do that in the next video. So I think having reached this far, this is the end of the video. So yeah, thanks for watching. Comment down below. Like it if you enjoyed it. Dislike it if you did not enjoy it. If you have any complaints, write them down below. Thanks and I'll see you next time.